Hello and welcome back to the Weird and Proud Podcast. It's Sam and James. James. Gorgeous. A classic. That, that was, was a classic intro. Great. Record that one. Just play that one over and over. No, again. I like I like to mix it up sometimes. It is fun to mix it up. Um hi everyone. Welcome. I like it when I interrupt you. Oh. Well, <laughs> You're the only one in that game. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Weird and Proud. And we have a great episode for you guys. Lot to cover in this episode. Lots of things to cover. I have a lot of things I got to discuss with James. And um, we got to catch up. We got to catch up on our trip to Maine, on some fun things going on, where we'll be around, around the world. And... Um, Obviously, some great, not around the world. Well, I guess kind of because I'm going international. We're going to other countries. Um, <laughs> I, of course. You're not lying. I'm not lying. I, of course, have some great secrets for you guys. Love and the um, some great variability. Variability? Is that the big word, right? Did I say that right? I think so. Very. It's like varying. You know it's what like I mean? variety? Yes. It has variety. Variability. <laughs> That works. It conveys, Someone looked that up. It conveys communication. I feel like you guys knew what I was saying. Um, variability? Variety. That's not a thing. I don't think so. No. Damn. Damn. Um, but we have a great show. Lots of lots of great things. First of all, James. We just got back from Maine. We did. How are you feeling? How do you feel this Maine trip went? I always love a Maine trip. Yeah? Yep. I had a little, we, we know we, I got a little thing. We don't know what it was, but yeah, James got, got a, a little tummy, a crummy thing. tummy, and I'm usually never the type to admit sickness, as you well yes. know this. Yes, and I try to tough through, but at a certain point, there's some times where you just gotta say, you, you know say, what, I'm taking this one out. Take, I'm, I'm sitting, sitting out. out for 24 to 36 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, but Maine is always a main zing. A main zing. We did it. This trip, you know, it was good. It turned it around. I mean, it was tough because as soon as the weather got good was when you got the crummy tummy. But, you know, here's the thing with Maine. And if you're from Maine, you know this. But I mean, it's most like anywhere in New England, I feel like weather can change on a dime. Dime. Da dime. Chin chan John dime. Change on a dime. Where you can, you know, look at the weather forecast. And like even like a week before we left, we were like, okay, there's like 30% chance of rain you know, on some of these days, but there are at least like three days that look good. We were going up there for like six days. And, you know, as soon as it gets a little bit closer, a little bit closer, all of a sudden it's like rain, 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 rain. Like I felt like every day it was had some sort of rain in the forecast. And that's the thing about Maine. You just never know. And even like what it did predict, like the day before we left, it was like 100 percent every day. And then we got there and we did have some like two days that were nice. We did. And it is kind of like the El Nino. El Nino. Yeah. Thank you. El Nino apparently is affecting this because there's yes. like, there's just, and everyone up there was so nice about making fun of it because they've had rain for like, what, 40 out of the last 60 well, days or something crazy like yeah, that? Yeah, it's been they've really had it real bad rainy in Maine but you know that's also we've gone up there a couple of years like we one year we were like all right we're renting we're gonna actually rent a place because normally we stay with my parents which like is fine to a degree but you know like it would be nice to like actually kind of feel like we're going on vacation not like staying at my parents house and we rented a place and it was and this was I think it was fourth of July it was I think it was too yeah and it was 50 degrees and raining every, every day. day. And someone was like, you know, it asked, like, when is a good time to go then to Maine? And that's just the thing about Maine. Like, there's really, like, you can't say 100%, you know, it's going to be. You know, anywhere it seems here, too. But I think more Boston and north. Yeah. You're in that little area that's yeah. right on the ocean. You get the cold, cold arctic from you know canada and north up there and then you get some warm fronts below and it's just kind of a spot where it's gonna have weather yeah all summer it's going long. to and I, you know, I guess that's like every you know it's like it's everywhere but to some degree like maine just can be so drastic it can be you can have a fourth of july in july where it's 50 degrees and pouring 
it's worth or the, 90. It's always worth the trip. But it's always worth the trip. Maine is amazing. Obviously, I am on Maine side. Born and raised, lived there for 24, 25 years of my life. Just prepare for anything. Prepare for anything. And luckily, there are a lot of things to do when it's rainy, but it's hard because we have Prue. So, like, we can't bring her, you know, and like, we don't, you know, at least I'm not really drinking. So, it's like, you know, a lot of it is breweries. Like, you can go to breweries. And I have a great time with that. <laughs> James is mine just drinking all day. And that is, you know, like, that's, and I actually did end up having a couple drinks. So, I was like, what the hell else? Am I just going to sit here and stare at each other? Uh, but it was good. I got to read my book um fourth wing by the way if you need a new book to read and um got to see the fam eat some great food bring your rain gear but know where you need to go when it, like know some indoor activities yeah. that you need to do if you go to yeah. maine always prepare to eat the seafood because there's so many good restaurants so you can always just eat extra and then when you do get a chance like be ready when there is a window of sun Go for Run. it. Go get your outdoor Run stuff outside. done right away. You just got to be yeah. prepared and move on a dime. Yeah. It's and just tough. find the positive in everything. I guess. Yeah. And honestly, probably August would be like the warmest it gets in May. But even like, you know, at the end of Labor Day, you know, Labor Day, which I know technically sometimes this is September, but. Always in September. Is it? <laughs> hundred. There's never been a Labor Day not in September. By my understanding. You know what's so annoying is that like. I can't say like I can't like just like throw out a fact and it not be fact checked. You know, like you're always gonna be there to be like, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> for your birthday, I'm gonna give you a card that says you can't fact check for 24 hours. <laughs> oh my god, whatever. Okay, well then every day it's I can remember what time of the year, whatever. Shut up. Um. <laughs> anyways, that's my main rant. You just never know about Maine. You just never know, but it is. But when you go up there and you get like that, we have had some trips. We've gone up and it's been 80 and sunny every day. And those are like, you know, and it makes you appreciate the really good days more. Exactly. It makes you appreciate like once we finally had a sunny day where we could go on the boat. It was like, oh, my God, this is the best day of my life. Hustle up. Get ready to go. You yeah. got to move. You we got to take day, advantage of it. All day. Yeah. So that was our trip. Hope you guys all had a great 4th of July. Got to do something fun. I know like everywhere is, was rainy though, on the East Coast at least. Very rainy for, East Coast. Yeah. It's been a very weird summer. Like I was just hearing someone was just talking about this too, how it's just been like, especially around us, especially like you're in the tri-state area, when it's been like really nice, we've had smoke issues. True. Or it's been rainy. We've just like it has been a lot of rain. It's been like we were it was cold. We didn't even put our air conditioners in until like mid June. Mid to late June. Yeah. 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 Like literally they're until usually like, in the first or second. They're week usually June. they're usually in in like May. We'll have some hot days. But it's been just bizarre. Um, anyways, it's what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, all right, James. I feel like now is the time. Because we have to discuss some of the weirdest stories. I'm prepared. And here's the thing. It's the part of the show where I don't know what the hell is going to happen next. <laughs> here's the thing, too, that's great. Is that, like, James, you really, like, don't go on TikTok. No. Like, you you will go on to watch, like, if I'm like, if James, go watch a video stuff, yes, or whatever. Of course. But you're not just going on there scrolling. I don't. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who probably either don't have tiktok or don't have hours a day to scroll on it um so some of the news stories this week originated from tiktok which it just feels like a lot of stories nowadays i think i talked about this before how like a lot of these new york post huffington post you know these kind of more cult pop culture-ish newspapers um pull from tiktok or from I, social media i mean that's one of the advantages of the world we live in for these companies, they have to adapt. They can't think, oh, these are bad. No, they got to say, if we're smart, this might be the fastest way we get news sources, right? Yeah. Reporters have always, the best reporters usually have the best resources, right? Yeah. So like, I'll use my example, the NFL, right? There's a couple guys that always break the stories first. They just have the insights into the inner workings of the league. Yeah. So these smart publications, they're going to be the ones that have these TikTok news reporters that might break a story for them. And yep. that's going to be how the new world works. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. I like it. 
it's uh it's very interesting and it is like you know obviously pe- anyone from anywhere can go on and tell these crazy stories but on tiktok something that's been going crazy viral this week is this woman who quote unquote sees a shapeshifter on a plane did you hear about this? I this I think I saw on Barstool Sports. Yeah, posted they might something have read, about yeah, Barstool this. I didn't watch the whole thing, too. so I I saw a caption about something, but I didn't yeah, pay so attention. You've seen it, and if you're yeah, I guess a lot of this also does kind of go over to. I know you're on the Instagrams every once in a while, more for sports, but um, so basically, this woman, there's this video that goes viral on TikTok, okay, of someone recording this woman running down the aisle of a plane okay and if you like if you saw it if you haven't seen it yet like if you just search like woman oh, i'm gonna go find it after this yeah 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 like woman shapeshifter plane like it will pop up it will be one of the first things to pop up and she's running down this plane and she's basically yelling i don't know what her exact words but she's like every like i need to get the fuck off this plane that man is not real he is like not there you guys need you know everyone needs to get off this plane like fuck all you guys i'm getting out of here like we're all like gonna die i don't know if shit all gonna die wow. like, we all need to get out of here like i'm getting the fuck out like that guy's not real like something bad is gonna happen we, you're paraphrasing paraphrasing Got i don't it. know but something like that she's just like get me off this plane get me off this plane get me off this plane and you see it and like, you know, if, if someone's like really drunk, like wasted, like you can tell like they're slurring their words. They can't really walk. This woman was very, you know, obviously she was rattled, but like it didn't really seem like she was wasted. Like maybe she had had a couple drinks. You was know. there anything else she could have been on? That would be my we first thought. Okay. Of course, that was the other thing, too, was like, was I'm she sure on everyone. something else? Yeah. Did she maybe, you know, mix something? Who knows? But... She seems like relatively other than just being like rattled and scared, she seems like pretty coherent to to a degree. You'll have to watch and kind of she go too far on micro dosing and it become a macro dosing. Maybe, but like even if you're like on like mush like I don't know, like what would I don't know, maybe. I'm just making fun. But now. still, but it, you know, it's like she and like she looks normal, like just like this, you know, average you know, it's just she doesn't really give off that vibe that she's like super, so, you know. So what happened next? Did they investigate the guy? Well, they. She was like pointing to someone that like wasn't there. Like that was the whole thing. Oh. Is like then there are all these other videos from other point of views that come out and are like, yeah, like uh, you know maybe there was a guy next to her. Like no one can really figure out like what it was. That really started her. Apparently, there was like one woman on the plane that said that she had like lost her earbuds, like her earbuds, and she thought someone next to her, the guy next to her, had seen it or like taken them. And she was like, Where are my AirPods? And it started like that. And then, you know, but no one really knows. And then, not too long after that, there was this other video that came out that of this man who's experienced who almost like did the same thing and like kind of had the same experience where he was like there's someone on this plane that's not a real person so it was just like huh that's weird sounds like i have an internet wormhole to explore sounds like you do and so of course the conspiracy theorists and everyone who you know takes it to the next level the real next level is saying you know, it is like a shapeshifter. It's a skinwalker. Skinwalkers. You know, like how we watched that whole documentary. But why are these people? Why is it, why are the shapeshifters on the plane? Well, so the conspiracy theorists say because <laughs> the dark world is opening up, and more of these darker entities are feeling more comfortable going into public places and like in places where so if they have the ability i'm just <laughs> throwing this out here. yeah they have the ability he... to come and go so d- was the theory that the shapeshifter was still somewhere on the plane or went to a different dimension yeah. well I, we don't know you know that i don't know because if they can dimensionally travel potentially right. they can time travel or yeah. just like teleport to another space yeah again why do they need to be in a plane yeah just go there well, I don't know. You know, it's like maybe because like the energy, because everyone's like really nervous before going on a flight. So there's just a lot of like nervous energy. Maybe they think we're so strange. They're like, 
that's part of like a scary thing for them is to try to have an actual human experience. Right. Because how exactly. weird we are. So they're like, they can go on a vacation yeah. where you're a human for a couple of days. Right. They're yeah. So yeah. They're just thinking outside the box. They're like, I could like jump out at night and like do the whole cliche thing, come out of your closet, but or I could ruin your European vacation. <laughs> they're, they're just trying to be humans. They're Ghosts to feel are just what it's like, like wild and out. The spirits, I guess I shouldn't say it's a ghost. It's a skinwalker or whatever, shapeshifter. Or um, someone else called it a lizard person. You know? Why that? I don't know. That I one like I don't know. I don't know what the idea entity, of the lizard person is. Because they could all just be related. They, uh, They're all the same right? thing. Right. It's an entity. Right. It's some kind of energy, right? Some kind of energy. Something. So anyways, that's what all the kids are talking about. And um, this did, it's just like only a couple days ago. So, you know, of course, everyone's like, well, wh- what happened to the woman? Like, where is she now? Like, what does she say? And she hasn't come out. Like, her name hasn't been released. So everyone, you know, and then of course people are like, yeah, if she's embarrassed and like if she took too many of something, you know, she's not going to be like, yeah, I'm an idiot. And, you know, a lot of question. Another question. What? This I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that on most planes these days, especially they film everything. Right. And there were a couple other. So the security cameras on the plane. Wouldn't they be able to confirm whether or not there yeah, was a like person American next Airlines to them? Yeah, American Airlines doesn't isn't gonna be like, okay, yeah, let me pull our for the TikTokers. You know, like it did it really. Like, they're probably the police. Let's make some TikTok noise about this. I know thing. American Airlines. Like we deserve let's to know the footage. We American deserve Airlines. to know here. And was it American Airlines? I think it was. Oh, uh, I know. Even sketchier. If it was like, you know, Delta, you'd be like, no way. There's no shapeshifters on Delta. No, no, but. There's probably a sh- there's definitely a shapeshifter. There's something on American shifting Island. on and American Airlines. Definitely lizard people on Frontier. <laughs> there's definitely something shifting on American Airlines. <laughs> and it ain't getting to your destination on time. No exactly. offense to anyone who works for American Airlines. Yes, no offense. But um, the other story, these two were just like you know it's a big week for TikTok. You know, lots of crazy shit happening. There's this other story that I've that I did some further research on and found that this is totally true. And there was a big article um, in December of 2022 about it, about how LASIK eye surgery, there's a 1% chance that it will make you go like psychotic, will make you have a psychotic break. Interesting. So what started this is that I saw this story about this woman on TikTok who was talking about her friend who she was this news anchor and was like one of the nicest bubbliest you know she was like in her 30s had i can't remember if she had kids but she had a husband she was just like the nicest woman ever but she had a really thick prescription for her eyes like she just had bad eyesight really bad eyesight i have bad eyesight you do too concur yes so she went and got lasik eye surgery And again, apparently this happens in less than 1% of people, but because the eyes are so close to where the part of your brain that like frontal lobe. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Sorry. Am I not supposed to fact check? No, you're just adding facts. That's fine. It's the optic nerve that's connected to the eye. Yes. That controls like your emotions. The frontal lobe does. Correct. And Basically, there is this chance where, like, it, if, you know, because if you've ever gotten LASIK or if you've heard about LASIK, you know, it's literally, they're basically laser beaming a hole in your cornea Mm -hmm. and removing it. And it's a fast, easy procedure. I know a ton of people have done it. But, like, there is this chance that it will have people going into, like, this depressive episode or just have horrible side effects. So, like, a couple. Is it like a laser lobotomy? almost yeah. literally like a laser lobotomy that is exactly like i was i'd pull up the article. i don't want to like have to like read an article to you um but you can look it up look up like lasik just look up lasik and it'll pop up but this woman like first of all too there's this chance that like even if it doesn't like drive you crazy there are some people who have such bad dry eyes from it like it makes your eyes dry out to the point where like this woman was making videos 
um, about her friend. Like her friend was sending her videos and she's like, I have to apply eye drops every five seconds or else it feels like like I want to rip my eye- own eyeballs out. Like it feels oh like they're on God. fire. And there were some people that would have like, you know, that vertigo sensation where you just feel like you're, you know, you're just off balance and like you can't walk straight. You can't think. And if you've ever had vertigo, it's like the worst feeling ever because, yeah, it's like you feel like you're on a boat 24 seven. You can't. Yep. And that's happened to people and people like and there's like an insane. I forget what the exact just because my fact checker is here. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, possible Lisa can complications causing psychological harm. Um, and what is the but basically there's well yeah, just keep saying one percent will have a suicidal idea ideations from LASIK eye surgery. Like wow. it'll like either it like does like mess with you psychologically that you're like that it you know, like this anchor, this woman that you know was posting originally about it on TikTok happiest woman and then she just went to being extremely depressed never left her house quit her job like was on all these antidepressants and then one day she just committed and alive herself wow that's horrible and there's stories like this all over and i have never heard about that in my entire life but i i have contacts i also i mean i don't have the worst eyesight ever but i can't drive without contacts or like yeah can't you know i really shouldn't be i really shouldn't not be wearing them but i had always i had been thinking you know if i do have a little bit extra money it would be really nice to get lasik and just not have to think about wearing contacts and like you know it's just it is can be a pain in the ass and i've you know everyone talks about how easy it is they're like you know you really don't even have to like go under you know you're because you you have to like keep your eyes wide open. Actually, I can't remember if nowadays you they don't put you to I don't think they put you totally under, but yeah, they numb everything. A little numbed. And they open. There's really no nerve sensors that you can feel in right. that. Like technically you can't really feel it. There isn't a sensation. Right. Like that was mm-hmm. yeah, there's no nerves to be able to feel the pain yeah. of it. You wouldn't feel pain. What? And so that always blew my mind. And it was always like, really? Like it just makes it so you can see again and you're fine. So what it does is if now you can fact check me on this. So there is a lens in the eye that right. bends light and why you can't see is the lens is thick. bending light. Well, it could or be two. concave or convex. Remember that yeah, thing yeah, yeah, where yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. way or the other. So it's supposed to be at the right angle where light comes through like a prism. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to focus on the back of the eye, on the optic nerve so that you can uh, create a picture. It's actually an upside down picture, but we won't talk about that of what you're interpreting. What is what light is reflecting at you? If that lens isn't focusing the right way. Right. Have you ever taken a magnifying glass to like make a light beam and heat? Same thing. It's the lens is like the magnifying glass and it takes the light and what you're looking at and it focuses See, it to a point. This is. Yes. Okay. If that lens is off, it can't make the point at the right spot on your eye. That's what glasses and contacts do. They readjust for the lens right. that's in your eye that is wrong. So the contacts or glasses are just bending light in a different way. James is like literally the most like an encyclopedia of randomness. Okay. What? This, I was a biology major. Yes. And then, so that's why LASIK can literally with a laser change that. And I don't know enough about it. There's some things in there. I'm sure I said incorrect, but that's pair of the paraphrasing. That's kind of what LASIK does. It just changed the bending of the eye. Now the, I'd love to find out what they think the causes of that are. Is the laser getting into the the part of the brain is I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's, they think it's getting into the frontal lobe. Yeah, it's the so it's this is a really long because now I got to go look to see where the not optic nerve innervates in the brain because I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, this was um... I don't think that the optic nerve would cause that. I think that the optic nerve goes to a different part of the brain to interpret what you're looking at. But the frontal lobe might be included in that part or not. Yeah, well, and a lot of it, too, is um yeah, like there's pressure that's inside of the eye that can cause, you know, like depending on what pressure, if you have dry eyes, 
just yeah if you're thinking about getting lasik just look into Be it careful. because I, do I your a, research my cousin and her husband are both optometrists and they very highly recommend oh my god we should good. ask them yeah and um then also my eyes are so bad normally normally like an optometrist where you go get your eyes checked they probably get some referrals if they think you're a candidate to get do you have you ever right. had someone say oh you're a candidate well, yeah. if they send them, they probably get a cut of that. And I'm not saying they do it for money. They're they're very good. They're yeah. not going to send you somewhere wrong. They don't ever recommend it to me. Inch- well, okay, My so that was the so other bad. thing, too, yeah. is that... I'm not really a candidate. Someone had posted, if optometrists like be- would believe in LASIK so much, why do all of them have glasses? And none of them got LASIK. So LASIK, if your eyes are still changing... Yeah. My usually eyes stop changing around the time that a lot of like other interior growth does, like say twenty five is where right, they usually start. But most optometrists are like, like my optometrist was fifty and he had glasses. That, that's a great question. I never thought about it that way. I and then I think about it, I'm like all the optometrists that I've seen have all had glasses. If LASIK was so great, then why do all the optometrists still wear glasses and didn't get it? I think that glasses are the least invasive way. To have good sight. Right. So and it's I, like, is it really worth it then? I don't know. That's, and that, I, it's just so, I never heard anything bad about my LASIK. eyes are so screwed up that they're kind of just, that's just how they are, right? Yeah. Um, it's I, you, funny. You never thought about it. You never thought about getting LASIK? No. I just personally, yeah. I don't mind putting contacts in. Yeah. I don't, I like wearing contacts because I'm usually pretty active in a day. And yeah. I'll knock Girl, my glasses right. of off. Course. That's yeah, why yeah, I yeah. wear contacts. Yeah. I like my glasses better when I'm at home at night. Like, you yeah, know yeah, me, yeah. I'm always in my glasses early. But if I have anything left active to do in the day, I can't wear glasses because I knock them off my head. Right. Where, of course. But yeah, it's just like I saw that and I was like, holy shit. Because I always had said, like, if at some point. We need someone to call in who has had LASIK. And yes. or if you are a trained yes. optician, we would like you to call in. Yes. We're going to need this. Well, I was going to say, before we go into the secrets. Maybe we do our first, like, interview with one of these people. Mm. We're going to need to see your medical license before we interview. Yeah, bringing some of the interviews back. Um, It's just always interesting because. I can find us an optometrist to interview. Well, we don't have to. Like, I want to hear from an optometrist that's, like, like, has some crazy stories. Like, we don't want to just hear about, like, eyeballs. What is this? Education? biology course i would love to hear some more about well, it you can just call them and talk to an optometrist how about that i'll record it and we'll record it <laughs> it'll go on your instagram page that's only pictures now of i'm me. intrigued do you think i'm gonna what do you think i'm gonna look up first shapeshifter or this one yeah exactly this well, one so I was gonna all say, day i'll forget all about the shapeshifter <laughs> until you see a shapeshifter james just wait i think you're a shapeshifter i think you're a shapeshifter how about that I think you know who's not a shapeshifter. Prudence. Prudence Marie. She's perfect. Um, so if you, I was going to say, if if anyone's if either like. If you're an like optometrist a, or a shapeshifter or a shapeshifting optometrist, please call yeah, in. Can you imagine if there's a shapeshifting optometrist? That's fucking amazing. That like, would I'm be wild. I'm just thinking of a Halloween costume idea. <sighs> Something to think about. Um, but yeah, if you've had it done or like had a crazy story about someone who got LASIK or like whatever. We want to hear it. Or, of course, if you are a shapeshifter. <laughs> what if we win as a shapeshifter for Halloween? We have the same jean short. We have the same exact outfit. <gasps> and we just replace each other in different situations. Because we have they the jean shorts know. and other. They'll nev- <laughs> we wear like our I Love New York t-shirts that we got and never wore. Well, as a I had seen that someone, like a makeup artist on, I think it was on Instagram, did their makeup so that it looked like me. Like they did it so like oh, they wow. drew out oh, the that's mouth. That's cool. I'll have to show it to you after. Yeah, it's I've never actually seen like that. freaky as hell. But I was like, that'd be funny if you someone did your makeup like that. Like you? Yeah. Shapeshifter for Halloween. Yeah. Hmm. We should have you dress up. I like as where me. we're going. This is interesting. And then I can be you. If you're a makeup artist, that's a real I need you to call in. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys could yeah, switch us somehow, that'd be great. Um it's like Freaky Friday. You know? Which one is Freaky Friday? Wow, how dare you. Wait, is that the Lindsay Lohan one? Yes, Got it. good job, you win. High five. Okay, so with that being said, yes, please call us in if you're a shapeshifter Wasn't or if you have a story about Lindsay. Trap? Or, yes, of course, hello. Um, call us in because it is now that special, special time 
where we listen to your weird secret voicemails. I love the secrets. Thank you all for calling in. Yeah, we we're love sorry that. if we miss some of them. We go, we'll go through back through them and sometimes bring stuff up. So just because you call in and you haven't heard yourself yet, yes. doesn't mean we aren't going to get to it. Exactly. Or maybe re-record it. Maybe listen back and be like, "Was this the best quality?" That's there's only been a couple that have been like. That's really bad the tough quality. part. It is because like, you can't hear yourself, and we. It, I know. I don't. We're know if sorry you can that you can't. To it. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. We wish people. But you anyways. know, I should maybe test that to see if I can, because it. it is the the, the sound quality is tough on some of them. Yeah, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. Um. So. With that being said, if you want to call in and tell us one of your weird secrets, you can go to speakpipe speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod. Again, it's speak S P E A K P I P E dot com slash weird and proud pod. And it's always anonymous, again, yeah, unless you want to leave your name, but um it's and easy you literally i'll put it in the description as well or you can type it in and you hit a button it records up to a minute and 30 seconds and then sends it anonymously over and you can be on the pod and we have some good ones today james are you ready prepared prepared okay all right here we go the first weird secret all right, so here's an embarrassing story for you. Um, only a few people, I've only told a few people this because it's so embarrassing. So um, I'm at work one day, I work in medical reception, right? So I'm checking in a patient, right? Sitting there talking, checking in the patient, and I feel a fart, right? So I'm like, oh, I could just let this out quietly, quickly, you know, it's fine. So, you know, I go to let it out, and uh, it is not a fart, it is shit. All right, so I just started, and I am in the middle of checking in a patient, patient sitting right in front of me, speaking to me. So I'm trying to, like, wrap this up as quickly as I can because I am sitting in my own shit, right? Okay, so finally I get the patient checked in, and I tell my coworker, I'm like, got to go to the bathroom, and I run my ass to the bathroom and, uh, you know, take my underwear off and I have to throw my underwear in the trash can and kind of just like bury it a little bit because it is, um, you know, full of my shit. I mean, listen, it wasn't like a big shit, but it was enough. And then, so I have to throw away my underwear and then it's, we're only like maybe halfway through the day. So I have to go commando the rest of the day. So yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's always hard, you know, because you want to trust farts. You want to trust yourself and say, no, I, kn I know this one. I know this one's just a little boop, puff of air, nothing crazy. And then betrayal by your own body. The audacity. It's a shapeshifter. <laughs> it's a shapeshifting poop fart. It's a shart, shart shape, a, shape shift and shart. It's a shart shifter. <laughs> shart shifter. That's what we'll call them. You think it's one thing? I like that was a really that's great the title of this. The shart about shifter. trust in your body. That was a really good breakdown. Yeah, nice. like well you really just like you want to trust yourself, you know, and because you know if it's one or the other. Yeah, you know, but you don't. But there's, you know, again, it's like that percent of the time where it's like i don't know i did and most things in life like you know i do always respect like women have to get ready and you have to put on makeup but there's a lot of societal pressure there's all these things it's hard but i'll get i'll give one thing that's harder for guys what is going commando in jeans oh yeah way harder for us if you have that situation where you don't get to have underwear and say you're in a pair of jeans. Mm. Now, like, dress pants, if they're loose, is okay. Fine. Dress pants, if they're tight, becomes very revealing very fast. <laughs> jeans Camel toe. is the worst. Because the zipper's right yeah. there. Like, And I'm not saying it's easy for women. You ever got your balls cut in a zipper? Yes. Was that was, the worst? Oh, my God. Don't. Oh. Uh, just Did you have to like it. in like something like Mary like have someone come help you? It was not that bad, okay. no. But I did bleed a lot. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I cut a little bit. 
Oh, yeah, that's not going to be fun. That was, I remember that because weirdly enough, I think I was in, I was in high school and it was around the time of there's something about Mary. So mm. it was like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. one of those things that you have usually experienced somewhat. As I was going to say some, at least it's got to happen guys, once I, in a I guy's have, lifetime. I did. Yeah. You get careful after that. Uh, yeah. It teach, teaches yeah. you a lesson real quick. Never make that mistake again. That was a great call. Sorry. We should focus on the caller because she took the time to call in. Early. Yeah. Focus on her, James. That was my fault. That was a great call. <laughs> Like sitting. James needs to make sure that you guys all appreciate just how much we love these voicemails. I do love these voicemails very much. The, and just being in front of in front of another person and then you let it go. Or are you worried about if that person can smell it? Apparently not. Well, especially too if you're a receptionist, like normally that glass door is in front uh, of you. So okay. normally it's like, well, you know, if we're behind a little bit of a wall, like what are the chances the smell's gonna escape that little window? But if especially she just one. thought it was a little one, yeah. you know, and obviously it wasn't like a massive blowout, but it was enough to be like, you gotta, yeah, swap it out. Yep. I knock on wood have never had to sh- like do that and like shart myself. I've peed my pants like recently, not recently, but like within the last five years, but more I've peed myself when I've been laughing so hard. Uh, okay. You let and, a little trickle out. And I've had a trickle. Got it. And then I had to. But, like, I haven't, luckily, luckily, if I pulled over. We've talked about this. I yes. pulled over on the side of the road and shit on the side of the road many times. But luckily, I've been, you know, like, and maybe that's the thing. Like, I don't know if I do trust myself that much. You're, you're cautious. If I have a fart, then I'm like, it's 50 50. I'm going to keep her in. You're keep, keep you, her tight. Uh, close you haven't to the vest. tested the water, so to speak. Or I'll go, you know, I'm like, I'm going to step away. I'm you not going to do this. haven't tested the enough. water. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'm not taking that risk. Smart. They say big risk, big reward. Yeah. Not in this neck of the woods. Big risk. Also, you can lose a lot. Yeah. Big risk, big. Doodos. Big doodos. What's the opposite of a reward? What's like the other, you know, a big risk, big reward? Consequence? Consequence? Or like, you know, it's like, I don't know. Loss. Loss. Maybe. Loss yeah. of underwear and self dignity. Loss. loss of a, yeah. That feels right. Um, so anyways, we love you. I'm so glad that, you know what, luckily, yeah, you were like, it's not like you had to go sit on a plane. Like you were sitting on a plane for like eight <laughs> hours. You know what I mean? Like That'd it always good... could oh, be worse. That would be a worse situation. It always could be worse, but we love you. God bless you. And, uh, thanks for calling in. You ready for the next one? John? Prepared. Here we go. Hello, Thomas and Janice. Had a little bit too much fun on 4th of July, and I accidentally texted my old boss, who fired me, and I said, what's up, dude? You want to smoke tonight or something? And I was so embarrassed when I saw that, but I am so proud to say she said, obsessed, and yes. So I I think I'm about to smoke down my old boss who fired me. Wish me luck and stay tuned. Bye. I love how this has become like a drunk dial like voicemail. I'm okay with that. And I'm honestly 100% okay. Unless it's like we can't understand you, which have been a couple that have called in. I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. Um, But that is hilarious. Please let us know what happened. Yeah, we need to know more. Yeah, about we need this. to call back you about what happened. Cut off right there. No, we need to know what happened, and yeah, you know, for the most part, it seems like everything's going well for you. If this person is cool that you like want to hang out with, you know, unless you're like, like I hate this person, like why did I do that? But it sounds like everything's working out in your favor, unless you know, I don't know, like something weird happens while you're there, like with them. But it sounds like I'm hope I'm think I'm like optimistic about this it feels like you guys are going in the right direction there's nothing like a smoke sash to really bond you together you know and really hash it out literally hash it out <laughs> wow well wow. done it's a good job but i've never had a boss that i was like yeah i want to hang out with that person you know what i mean like i would never be like yeah i would want to smoke you know and hang out with that person i've never had that so like if i had texted one of my old bosses i would the next day i'd be like oh fuck <laughs> do you have any bosses you would text 
Oh, absolutely. You do. I've had some fun old bosses. Oh, see, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. My have a few pre-questions for this person for oh, the next okay. call. So let's do a pre-interview here. One, what did you get fired for and what did you do? Yeah, what'd you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that too. I was like, you should have asked them why they fired you. What'd you do? What'd you get fired for? Yeah. Um, how much older is this person than you? Yeah. I'm guessing they're similar-ish in age. I was going to say they must be because... I bet it's within five years of each other. Yeah. Five, ten. Um, is this person still with that same job? Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Really asking the hard-hitting questions we all need to know. <laughs> and, of course, how it went. What was going to be the other question? I was trying to come up with a harder-hitting question since you called me out. Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Or did she, do you think she has a crush on you? Oh, yeah. I went yeah. there. Is this a, is this a, a love story? A uh, work romance story? Yeah, call us back. Let us know. Like, what happened, girl? You can't just leave us hanging. Um, But we love that. I love that, you know, again, if you ever just want to call in, yeah, be like, listen, this is what I'm going to go do. But then you have to let us know how it went. That's the only thing is now you have to call us back and tell us how it went. Love you. Okay. James, are you ready for the last voicemail? Last one? Yeah. Okay. Have three. I try, to, I try to do three. If you guys haven't noticed, I try and do three every time. Okay. A little bit of, a little bit of everything for everyone. And this one's a longer one. Okay. You ready? Ready. All right. So my weird travel story is. Uh, when I was about 13, we went on a family vacation to Mexico. Me, my mom, my dad, and my brother. Um, fun little antidote. This was the last vacation we went on before my parents got divorced, which I don't think has anything to do with the rest of the story, but just thought I'd mention that. Anyways, also, so we missed our first flight because uh, my brother's birth certificate wasn't notarized, so we had to wait to get it notarized or whatever. And then... We, um, the next flight we get on, we have a four hour layover in Dallas and on the flight, I fall asleep and while I'm sleeping, I start my period. All right. And I am wearing white sweatpants. So we get to Dallas and all I have is my bloody sweatpants. So we search all around looking for, um, some clothes. For me. So, you know, we find a pair of Dallas cowboy shorts. Then we get to Mexico and they lost all my luggage. So all I have while we're in Mexico is a par- pair of Dallas cowboy shorts and my bloody sweatpants. So, yeah, feel free to laugh at my misfortunes. <laughs> That's tough. All, like, you know, men have all zipped up their wiener. This one's more on your camp. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. This is a story that at least once in every woman's life, she will have her period bleed through. And not just, like, a little bleed through. Like, even now, you know, it'll happen. But, like, to the point where it is very visible or it's in, like, white pants. You know, like, because sometimes it's in black pants. It's like somebody stuck you with a knife. Literally. And it is, especially when you're younger too, like at some point, like when you're older, it's like, whatever. If someone's, you know, like who cares? But like when you're young and it's, you're new to it too. And you're not really, it is the worst feeling, you know, it's again, it's kind of like zipping your balls in your zipper. Oh no. I'm, I'm guessing yours is where again, women well, it's take more, the card you know, an emotional pain rather than like, especially when you're young. Pain. Oh yeah. That's gotta be the most embarrassing. I, that had happened to me when I was in middle school and like to the point where I was like leaving, like I was sitting in the chair and I remember getting up from class and I had like, like there was like a huge blood ring, blood ring on the chair. And I was so embarrassed that I was like, Oh my, I like didn't want to say anything. Well, no, what are you going to so, do? You don't know what to do. You know, I just remember the next, like, we're leaving and the next class is coming in and they're like, ew, there's shit on this chair. Who's shit in the chair? Oh, And I just had no. to, like, wrap us. I literally had a sweatshirt that I had to wrap around my waist. Okay. 
and just walk around the rest of the day. And then I'd lift it up, sit. I probably stay in like stay to probably throw out like six chairs. You just stayed with it. I just stayed with it. Trooper. I was too scared, embarrassed. Oh my God, that's horrible. Because you just like, like I was, this was middle school. So it is, it was like brand new. It's, you know, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know how many tampons to use or, you know, I just didn't know. I was too scared to use tampons for so long. Oh. So I, and I was too scared to like ask for another pad somewhere. Like it wasn't available everywhere. People just didn't talk about it. I also was very young when I first had mine versus there were, versus probably, there were other kids that didn't have didn't theirs have yet. yet. Yeah. Didn't even know what it was. Like the, you know, the guys would see and be oh, like, what have, is this? We have no idea. No, we you still, know? there's still a lot of guys. You don't still know. don't really even know what it is. So I just remember it was like, I still like remember every feeling that I had that day. You know, it's so funny how certain memories stick with you. But it's like, I remember this, like the kind of pants I was wearing. I remember the sweatshirt I had. And yeah, I probably was like 13. So crazy. Life is crazy. But that's what makes you stronger. You know, at the end of the day, like a lot of these stories, whether they're embarrassing or weird, it really like, you know, it makes you just care less about the little things because it's like, whatever. I walked around with looking like my ass fell out of my fucking pants, you know, a day in middle school. And I'm alive. I'm still, everything's okay. Nothing, you know, like back then it was like the world was ending. Like I was so embarrassed. I didn't want to go to school the next day because I thought everyone saw it and thought I was gross. Like, I don't, you know, it's like you look back and no one ever probably remembers that. Or What can't a sweatshirt wrapped around your waist fix for you? Really? It, honestly, that is a good question. Not, there's not many things it can't. Everyone listening now that they've heard this story. Get up off your bloody chair and go get something done. <laughs> go have a great day. No one day. wants to work these days. Get off your ass. You know what that's from? No one wants to work these days. Kim Kardashian. Oh. Very infamous quote. She, no one wants to work these days. She's I'm sure she works work. super hard. She does, James. That's what she's saying. And she does work hard. Um. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for telling that story. Because, again... There are times when even now I bleed through there are certain like, you know, but you le- also learn your lesson. Like if I have a heavy period, I- I'm not wearing white. Like I will wear black just in case. But when you're yeah. young, it's like you don't know. No. And you can't even you probably just you probably aren't into and your bodily cues. It. Like, right. is that a thing? I know now. I mean, yeah, you know really well when something's yeah. happening. Yes. Right. Back then, did you even know no. your bodily cues at and all? You didn't even know like how to keep track of it or. Oh, you know, like your parents help a little bit, but it's like even it's just like embarrassing. It's like you don't want to ask, but like, hey, mom, like, how do I know my parents? <laughs> you know, you're real excited in junior high to talk to your parents about that, right? Yeah, exactly. super excited. Ugh, the worst. Anyways, we love you guys. Thank you so much for calling in, everyone who gave a secret. Um, make sure you update us. If you have any updates, we're looking at you. Smoke and shape shifting optometrist and shape shifting optometrist. We, we need really. You really need someone to know you're out there what is going on in the shape-shifting autometry world but if you also want to call in leave us a weird story or tell us about the shape-shifting optometrist you can call in to speak by speak (laughs) you're so good at that i like doing it it's so fun see like i would never like put a recording over that you know like it's too good when it's just off the cuff right you know um it's speakpipe.com slash weird and proud pod It'll be in the description. You can just type right in. It's also in the link of the bio of our Instagram, Weird and Proud Pod. We would love if you could give it a follow. Check out we, the updates on there. And um, we love you, weirdos, so much. Thank you so much for the support. Also, make sure if you're on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button. We would love it so much. Make sure you like it, you know, subscribe, five stars, you know, all the things really helps. It helps more than you even know. Okay. We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening, making it this far. You're the best and we'll see you next week. You're the best weirdos. Keep it up. We love you weirdos. Bye. Keep it up.